This tutorial will walk you through the employer screens to create a job listing in iMatch skills. If you look in the description below this video, you will see navigation links to make it easier to review sections of the video. To begin, go to www.imatchskills.org. On this page, click Employers, click here. This is where you will log into your company iMatch Skills account. If your company has posted job listings in the past, go to Returning Customers and enter your username and password. If your company has posted listings in the past but you have not, please call your nearest WorkSource Center to find out what you need to do to receive your username and password. If your company has not posted job listings in the past, click on Employers Register here. For now, you'll enter your username and password in the box above. This page is the first screen of your iMatch Skills employer profile. You'll notice your employer ID number is visible on this screen. Your employer ID number is something that may come in handy when you are connecting with WorkSource Oregon staff. There are also some employer tools and recommendations here. System information or updates will be listed on this page as well. Clicking on the My Company Information tab will open up this page where you can edit company information, user administration information, and worksite location information. From here, we'll click on the Create New Listing tab. This first job listing page gives you a list that shows some of the things that will be needed as you create your listing. Now click on the Create New Listing tab. On this page, you'll choose how you'd like your listing to be posted. If you'd like your listing to be open to anyone without any screening by WorkSource staff, click on the first option. For recruitment assistance through the business team, or what we call a staff-assisted listing, where our business representatives will personally screen all potential applicants for the requirements you've chosen, please select the second option. So for the sake of this video, We'll go ahead and click on Candidates May Obtain Application Instructions Without Pre-Screening by WorkSource Oregon Staff. We also call these listings self-referral listings. So we've made that selection and then we'll click Next. All right, so this is where we enter the details of our job posting. First, I'm gonna enter a job title. Next, we'll put in the job description and duties. So we like to do this in a certain formatting and so this is what most centers use when the centers are inputting the jobs for customers. They'll use this type of a formatting. So at the top generally will be the required skills. And then if you have skills that you like to prefer but they're not necessarily required. And then a job duty section. Here are some examples of good and not so good job listing formatting. So once you have that in there, then put the number of openings. For this listing, I only have one opening. But if you have a job opening and you have multiple openings for the same job, you can just up the number of openings in this box and not have to write extra job listings. One job listing will cover it. And the hours per week will go here. Whether the position is full-time or part-time or if it varies, whether the job will have a duration of six months or more, and then the shifts available for this job. And if there's more than one shift available, you can select as many as you like. So once we've made all of our selections, we'll hit next. So this page pops up with all of these job classifications on the page. And these job classifications are based on the job title we put in the listing and the job duties in the body of the listing. So this ranks each job classification by relevance. So it has receptionists and information clerks at the top, and that is the best fit according to this. It's a receptionist position, so that's what we're going to select. The amount of experience that we're asking for, which is at least one year, so I'll mark that. One nice feature in IMAT skills, and you'll see this throughout many of the pages in IMAT skills, You'll see these blue links, and underneath these blue links is extra information. So this has information about the receptionist position specifically, with a small description, some statistical information, alternate job titles, 
and skills associated with receptionist. So it's just another great detail of IMAT skills that allows you to be more informed about classifications and such. Then we'll go down and we'll hit next. This page shows us the selections we've just made and gives us the opportunity to change. So if we want to add more or less experience, we can do that. Or if we'd like to change the job classification, we can click this button to go back and, and look at the other possibilities that are there. So I'm going to click Next. This page gives you the opportunity to select any particular licenses or certifications that you'd like them to have. You can also click to prefer that these candidates have a National Career Readiness Certification. So I'll go into the Add Licenses just to show you what it looks like. So these are the license and certification groups. So if I click on one and, and then hit go, it'll list the licenses available under the dental group or whatever group you decide to choose. Now if I go back and you've looked through here and you can't find your license or certification, you can do a keyword search and let's type in CPR. And there is our CPR and first aid certification. So you could click on one of these. Now you can require this or prefer this. So it gives you a choice in your screening methods. I'm going to go ahead and click next. On this page is where you'll put your minimum level of education requirement, if any. You can also put a preferred major. Uh, you can select a minimum age for your posting, depending on the requirements. There's also a gender selection. whether this position requires union membership. And then there are check boxes for any pre-employment requirements. So now we'll click Next. On this page, you'll select if there is a required driver's license need. If so, in the box down on the bottom, you'll need to provide justification for the requirement of that driver's license. I'm going to select Next. This page allows you to select a language requirement, if any. So if you click yes, it takes you to a page where you can click the requirements. You can either require a skill or prefer a language skill, and you can select whether they need to be able to read, write, or speak. And in the drop down here, there are other languages. So you'll see lots of languages to choose from. And then again, as in driver's license, there needs to be justification for the applicant to require them to speak write or read a specific foreign language. So we're not going to require that. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit next and go no here for no requirement. On this compensation screen, you can assert the wage range that will be displayed to the job seeker. If you prefer not to display a wage range and just list the position as depending on experience, just check that box and leave the wage range blank. Down below under maximum wage and salary offered, you don't have to put a wage in the box, although in doing so enables your business rep to better recruit for you if your listing is a staff assisted listing. If you do put a wage in the box, it is invisible to job seekers. Only staff can see the number. If you do not put a wage in the box, mark the drop down selection as per other. And then you also need to certify that you are offering a minimum of minimum wage. And below that, you can select any benefits that you're offering prospective applicants. And you also get a text box to type extra benefit information. Now I'm going to click Next. So this page is where we select our worksite. And as you see, we have two worksites to select from. And we can also add a new worksite by clicking this button. So if I click that button, you can add a new worksite name address. You can also give directions to the worksite to help the applicant. I'm not going to add a worksite, but this is where you would do that. So I'll click Cancel. I've selected the portal worksite, so I'll click Next. This page is where you will select the contact person for this listing. If they are not an available job listing representative, please add them by selecting the Add New Contact link. Contacts added here will only be authorized to work this job listing. This does not authorize them to insert new job listings or make changes on the employer account. So I'll make my selection, click Next. This is the contact details page. This is the page where you tell the applicant how you want to be contacted and for them to apply for this position. 
If you have selected that job seekers are not to be pre-screened by WorkSource staff, please do not select the confidential box. If your listing is one where WorkSource staff will be pre-screening applicants, just note that your confidential information is always treated confidentially until released to job seekers in the form of a referral to your business. A referral contains your specified contact instructions. If you do select confidential, WorkSource Oregon staff will not give your company name, contact name, or work site to any job seeker. In this case, a referral would include only the contact instructions entered below in the referral instructions shown to job seeker field. One of the easiest and clearest ways to communicate what you want a job seeker to do would be to check the other box and then in the box below that, under referral instructions shown to job seeker, type exactly what you want the job seeker to do. You can just use the check boxes above there and indicate how you want to be contacted. It's your choice. Once I've made my selection, I'll click next. In this box, you can choose an application deadline and also a future open date. If you don't choose a deadline date, self-referred job listings generally stay open for 90 days. You can edit or delete during that time as needed by visiting Manage Listings. Future open date means the posting will not be made public until this date. Below that, you can also make your job available on the National Labor Exchange, which is a national jobs database. And below that, there are two check boxes that you can check if you'd like to learn more about those programs. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. So that's it. Your job listing has been entered. So now we'll scroll down to, to the bottom of this page. As you see here, you're certifying that you understand that WorkSource Oregon does not perform criminal background checks. All candidates will be considered regardless of age, race, color, religion, gender, national origin, or disability. And this job listing is compliance with state and federal law. So we'll submit. You have choices. You can hit Submit for WorkSource Oregon Review, which means that a staff person will take a look at this listing to make sure it's accurate and there are no issues regarding discrimination or ADA. If needing to be reviewed, a WorkSource Oregon staff member will process the listing in the next 48 hours and contact you with any questions. If the listing is eligible for auto opening to make live on our job board immediately, you will see the option to automatically open. So I'm going to try automatically open here. Here you can see the job listing has been received and your job listing will automatically open upon activation of your employer account. WorkSource Oregon staff may contact you for clarification or additional information. One more thing, if we go back to manage listings, it will show you all of the listings, whether they're open or closed, assigned to your company. Right now there's only one in here. Down the road you have a listing that you need to open and it's a listing that you've posted in the past. You can go into the manage listings area and copy any listing, whether it's closed or whether it's open, and just copy that listing instead of having to write a whole new listing. Another important function that you can do in the Manage Listings area is to change status. And there are several things you can do here. Uh, the most important things are you can put a job listing on hold. So if you have uh, a pause in your recruitment, maybe you've gotten enough resumes so you wanna pause the recruitment for a while to see if those applicants pan out and if not to reopen. But even more important is when you're done recruiting, it's important that you close the listing. And you can do that by clicking the Close button. And then here you can put the reason that it was closed. So the one reason may be that you filled the job listing outside of IMAT skills, so you didn't use IMAT skills, or WorkSource didn't refer a candidate to you. So you could put the not filled not using IMAT skills. Or if you did fill it using IMAT skills, you can indicate that there. Uh, if you just have no more need at present, maybe you enough time has passed by, you haven't gotten a candidate and you're just going to shut the recruitment down because you don't have that need anymore or whatever other reason you want to close it, you can do that or you can actually hit the close for other reason and indicate any comments here about why it was closed or if you did fill the job using WorkSource, using IMATS skills, you can indicate that here and maybe the person was hired. And then what you could do once you have indicated what your reason is, 
you can just hit save. So let's say you filled this job listing using IMAT skills. Just make sure you press that radio button. You can put a note in here if you'd like, or you can just go down to save. It's going to ask you, yes, I do want to close this. And here you can put in some notes about, you can tell us who you hired through IMAT skills. You can let us know if anybody turned the job down or any other comments here. Now, if you look here on these links, these are the folks that under employer self-referral, these are the people that you have looked at and you actually viewed their contact information. When you view their contact information, they're automatically employer self-referred. If a job seeker self-refers themselves to your listing, they would appear here. So let's go in here. And here are the folks that were self-referred by the employer. So let's say that you hired one of these folks. You can press here under H for hired. Here's the uh, key for the results here. Or ARJ is applied uh, but refused job offer or did not report to work. Uh, DNA did not apply. DNR did not report to interview. ANH, applicant not hired. So maybe they applied and you screened them and hired somebody else. And NR is not resulted. So let's say you hired Jason and we can put a future start work date. So if you, if you put hired and you're going to start them on June 1st, for instance, just put that in here. And let's say that in Jamaica, you interviewed her, but did not hire her. And let's say Joni just didn't show up for the interview. So we'll just put that there. And then from there, if you're not going to put any notes in, hit save. The job listing is closed and you've reported that hire. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you have any further questions regarding job listings or other workforce topics, please call your nearest WorkSource Center and speak to your business team representative. Center contact information can be found at worksourceoregon.org.